Okay, welcome to the Feast of Israel. I'm David Mack. We are going to be looking at the seven Feast of Israel and many things from a Messianic uh, perspective. This is the first um, week that we're going to be covering uh, two feasts actually today, the Passover and Unleavened Bread in addition to uh, something called the Oral Law that is not a feast, but it, it's helpful in uh, understanding some of the Messianic portions of the life of Christ that we're going to be going over. So today we're going to be going over uh, a, a feast called uh, Pesach or Passover. Um, but before um, the Passover, Jewish homes clear the house of all unleavened bread, all unleavened any anything that's uh, has leaven in it, cookies, ding dongs, Twinkies, anything that has leaven in it. So if the uh, Passover is here on the fifteenth, they would start back here, like you know, just like just like uh, Christians. Some Christians uh, take holidays very seriously and they're all into it and they like Christmas and they can't wait to decorate and they start weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ahead, you know, getting Christmas things out and others don't care that much about it. Well, it's the same way with Jews. So the Jews that are really into it, religious Jews that are really into it, the secular Jews don't even bother with it. They start cleaning their house. It's a, I mean, a thorough spring cleaning of the house. They may bring in, you know, other, uh, hire people to come in and help them clean. Um, but uh, they clean the house. But the, but here, the day before sundown, before Passover is to begin, there's a tradition, I would call it, called searching the house. And uh, it's especially nice if you have younger children because the, the, the parents take, uh, so the house, is, the house is basically cleaned of any leaven, but they take uh, some bread or some parts of a cookie and they intentionally, they know where it is and they, they place it around the house. And then it's like, a, it's like an Easter egg hunt, you know? And then it, it's up for the kids to, to go around and, and, they, and find it. And that's when we get to the, uh, Festival of Unleavened Bread. I'll give you some more details on that, but that starts before Passover, because Passover is 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 a one day feast, and Unleavened Bread is a seven day feast. Here, so Passover plus Unleavened Bread, so it's an eight day feast. So, on the day of Passover, all the leaven needs to be taken out of the house, also. So they start ahead of time. So before Passover. All the leaven of the house is taken out. So I, for each feast, I go over the biblical practice. So let's look at um, Exodus 12. And we see what's called the Egyptian Passover. The Passover that uh, was the, the 10th plague in Egypt. And there's a couple things here, verses 1 through uh, 13, for without reading them all. And, and for the people on the tape, too, I will say that you're going to get all this information that I'm talking about on a handout. So you, you don't need to furiously, you can take some notes, but you're going to get all this on a handout. But on the, it says on verse 3, uh, the, uh, starting, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month. Now, Passover is the Rosh, the head of the Jewish, of the Jewish calendar. It's the first month, first, uh, this in here is the first month of the Jewish calendar. When you get to Rosh Hashanah, that's the first month of the civil calendar. So for Rosh Hashanah, they'll say 
Happy New Year! But for uh, Passover, it's the first of these seven feasts. It's the first one, and it's important because it sets up all the rest of them. This month is to be the first month, meaning the, of the religious calendar. The first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household, and they are to examine the lamb. Verse uh, 4. Um, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person would eat. The animals you choose must be one-year-old males without defect. Sheep or goats, take, take them until the 14th of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Now, if you look up here, I have it, the Jewish calendar. And uh, so we start with the 10. Now, in the, in the Jewish calendar, the night precedes the day. They take that from Genesis. And there was night and there was day the first day. There was night and there was day the second day. So the night precedes the day. And normally, the day starts at twilight or sundown. And technically, the rabbis say it starts when you can see three stars. That's their made up, it's not in the Bible, but that's their made up thing. So it's so on the 10th, all the head of the household was supposed to pick a lamb, take a lamb. And for one, two, three, four, five days till the 14th, they were supposed to examine that lamb and make sure it was without spot or blemish. And then Exodus says, must slaughter them at twilight. Now it's interesting because there's two twilights up here. If the, if the 14th starts at twilight and it ends at twilight. So which twilight are they talking about? Well, this is the fifth day so it has to be twilight before the 15th. So in Exodus, they said at twilight, just as the sun's going down, they slaughter the lamb. I'll read it again. They must slaughter them at twilight, at twilight. And then take some of the blood, put it on the doorpost. Okay, then let's look at... Um, Leviticus, turn a couple chapters over to Leviticus 23. Verses 5 through 8. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight. On the 14th day of the first month. Once again, the first month meaning the uh, religious calendar. On the 15th day of the month, the festival of unleavened bread begins. Now, that is the day of Passover. The 15th is, the, is Passover, but it still means that, that that's part of the eight-day feast. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Passover, that eight-day thing, begins on Passover the 15th. On the 15th day of the month, the Lord's festival of unleavened bread begins. For seven days, you must eat bread made without yeast. So that's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the Passover plus those seven equals an eight-day feast. Okay? Now, Passover and uh, weeks or Shavuot or Pentecost is another pilgrim feast. Passover, weeks, and tabernacles or booths are the three what they call pilgrim feasts. Pilgrim feast said that uh, every able-bodied Jewish man, wherever they are in the world, technically, was supposed to come back to Jerusalem for those, for those feasts. That's why you see people from all over the world at Pentecost and the need for languages to be spoken to them in their native language because they came from all over the world. But uh, Pesach or Passover is one of, is one of those travel feasts. Okay, so basically it was pretty simple initially. You take the lamb, examine it for five days, slaughter it at twilight, cook it, and and the meal was in homes, it was in each home, and and uh, 
put the, the blood over the doorpost so that the angel of death could pass over that household. So that's the biblical practice. But the Jewish observance, like <laughs> so many of the things, the Jews have added so much to it. Um, we're going to take a look at what, what, what the Jews did. Now, when Jesus, in the time of Christ, when he ate the Passover meal with his disciples then, then, uh, on the 15th, um, he had come into Jerusalem on the 10th. The triumphal entry into Jerusalem was on the 10th, on Sunday the 10th, okay? And then for one, two, three, four, five days, the Sadducees and the Pharisees examined him to see if he was without spot or blemish, since he is our Passover lamb. So during those five days, the Pharisees would say to him, by what authority are you doing these things? And the Herodians would say, uh, should we, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? And the Sadducees, even though they didn't believe in the resurrection, would ask him, you know, they, they put forth this ridiculous scenario of this woman was married and her <laughs> husbands kept dying and she had seven husbands. And they said, whose wife will she be in, in the resurrection, even though they didn't believe in the resurrection? And the, the, the Torah teachers would say, which is the greatest commandment? So at the end of, on the 14th, he had, he was found, he was examined by the Jewish religious leaders and found to be without spot or blemish, just like the, the Passover lamb in Exodus 12. So, um, now it's important to understand here that The Passover, Gethsemane, being arrested, taken first to uh, the Sanhedrin, Annas the high priest, then to Caiaphas, then to Pontius Pilate, flogged, found, you know, although Pontius Pilate was desperate to try to say this, this man has done nothing wrong and to let him go, the Jewish people would say, let his blood be on us and, our, us and our children. And uh, so finally he was, he was flogged and crucified. And at 9 o'clock in the morning, on Passover, at the temple, they have what's called, the, 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 Pharisees, the, the Sadducees had what's called a Haggigah offering. And the Haggigah offering was that normally they had a, a 9 o'clock sacrifice and a 3 o'clock sacrifice. And that, on Passover, the Haggigah offering was, they offered one lamb for the whole nation. So just as the Roman soldiers were pounding the nails into Messiah's hands, right here, the hand in those times, they talk about hand washing, the hands were considered to be from the tip of the finger to the elbow. That was considered the hand. So when they, when they drove the nails in, they, they drove it in here so they, you could hang. And then they, they turned them sideways, they pronate them like this, and they drove one nail through both heels. So as they were doing that, exactly when they were doing that, when he's on the ground, they're patting those nails in. At the temple, the Sadducees are offering their Haggigah offering. One lamb for the whole nation. Obviously, prefiguring uh, Christ. So all that, you know, from nine to noon, the wrath of man, when the people would come by and say, if you're really the Messiah, come down from the cross. And they were, you know, they were making fun of him. They were gambling for his clothes and all that from nine to noon. From noon to three, there was darkness that came all over the world. And it was the wrath of God. That's when, for the first and only time, when God the Father would turn his back on God the Son and Peter tells us in 1 Peter that, that Messiah became, became sin for us on the cross. All that happened in one day. All that happened in one day. So 
right here, right there, that twilight, they had, they had to get Messiah in the tomb before the Sabbath on Saturday. So Gentiles or, or Christians, you know, they think that Passover is Thursday night. But from a Jewish perspective, it's Friday morning. It's, it's Friday, the night preceded the day. So all that happened in one day. 